Hi, Hannah. Hi, John. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you great. doing? Good. We're on different sides of the world, so I'm having my cup of coffee and still greeting the day. Yeah, and I'm um, getting ready to make dinner in a little bit here over in Germany. So yeah, mm. it's fun fun being connected. We we both live in the same city, although I am moving. Spoiler alert! But uh, oh. Yeah, I didn't tell you that part. Um, I accidentally put in my 30 day notice <laughs> the other day on my yeah. apartment uh -huh. because I was, I was just fishing for information on like, hey, what's the process? <clears throat> and they're like, oh, you, your move out's been initiated. I was like, okay, actually this makes sense. But Ooh. yeah, um, good friend of mine offered um, space in his new home in Denver and it's it's an opportunity wow. that makes sense for me and I really like the city. So um yeah. I love Colorado. I just, oh, yeah. I, re I think I told you I recorded my latest album out there a few months ago. So yeah, yeah. good, good creative vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Great people. I yeah. There's, there's tons of reasons why I'm saying yes to this and um, it's bittersweet, but yes, I'm, I'm here on the other side of the world and we're connected by some great technology here and we were connected, um, through other technology. Yeah. We're just connected through Instagram and threads. And I, when threads first came out, like, I don't, what was, did they set the record for like most, um, the quickest number of user growth or something like that when they first came out? I, I feel like that sounds familiar, but I think the trick to that was because it was so heavily integrated with Instagram that a lot of people were kind of like accidentally or just unknowingly creating threads accounts. Yeah, so. they, I think people were like rushing to do it. Like every, I think it was a trend. It like people were just, I just noticed everybody doing it and doing it and doing it. And I was like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you, and they means. send you all the notifications of this person wants to follow you on threads, which doesn't, it's not actually, they didn't click your name and say, please join. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what I think was really, what is really awesome about it and compelling is like you'll yeah you'll like be connected with random people who share the same interests or are making yeah. like compelling commentary and so yeah i think i forget the exact thing that i saw of yours but it was it was around you know artist development is around creative growth it was around the similar types of things that we do and um I'm not somebody who believes in like avoiding somebody because they do something similar to me. I think we, we, there's strength in numbers and there's a rising, rising tide effect. And, yes. and I would love to hear your commentary on this, but I think just like the world of music and artists and independent artists and growing and developing artists are just so underserved and there's like mm -hmm. no real playbook. So, so people are just trying to figure out like, where do I start or what do I do next? And, um, I think the work that you do and hopefully that I'm doing as somebody who's four years behind you, I think at this point, um, can, <laughs> Time, can help whatever. Out. Yeah. What is, <laughs> but, but hopefully add value there. So, um, yeah, I'd love to hear kind of, you know, your, the you story, the, you know, why you got into this and, you know, yeah. um, where, where you found, you know, you've been able to help creatives. Yeah, you're totally right in that it's an underserved community, which is why I got into coaching. Um, similarly, the underserved component of mental health of creative people and emotional well-being. So I've been an independent artist for 12 years and around uh, five years, six years into that, I realized how if I just kept doing the artist thing and doing it for me and talking about me and my music and my artistry, that felt really limiting. And I saw this opportunity that my music and my voice and my expression online and my story could actually have a positive impact on other people more so than just like, that song's really good. This, like, you're entertaining. Um, even so far as, like, the lyrics really, like, meant a lot to me. Like, I could do even more than what I was doing by just being an artist. So I started talking about mental health a lot online. And that was very helpful to people. And then I went and got certified in emotional intelligence and learned the actual frameworks and vocabulary and skills and tools to 
navigate my own emotions and then teach other people how to do the same thing and see mm-hmm. emotions as valuable pieces of information and ultimately tools that can build a successful life for a person. And that was a huge light bulb moment. I was like, you mean these emotion things aren't just like getting in the way of my success <laughs> and it, like a huge inconvenience. Um, and because the people I was surrounded with weren't really artists to creative people, they were in mental health fields kind of more specifically. I was like, someone needs to take this work to the artists and the creatives. Like no one's talking about this. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And I just sort of started talking about it and offering it online. Like I do this emotional intelligence work. Does anybody want just like a free hour long call to talk about this stuff? Did some free calls, loved it, was really good at it. And over the last four years, I've kind of built that into a whole coaching business mm-hmm. um, where now I have this whole approach uh, unique to my own coaching style where I get to help independent artists and other forms of creatives pave their way in an industry that has, as you said, no rule book. <laughs> no one's telling you what to do. So you have to learn how to let yourself be your own guide and that's what i try to do is act as a reflector to help people understand themselves and where they want to go and how to make that happen that's great i mean yeah taking that approach with the the mental health side of things and like i mean that's that's in my opinion we all maybe we all but i think a lot of people need help with that i needed help with that i still need help with that right like i've had so many ups and downs over the over recent years related to music related not to music related to career personal life all that stuff and so i think like by taking the initiative and offering that even for free in the beginning right yeah. like as yeah. um and so what are like some of the common things that you hear day to day working with artists, working with creatives, like good and bad, right? Like I want to hear, you know, some of the challenges they're facing, but like, what are some of the breakthroughs you've been able to help them with too? Yeah. So I would say there's this really common path in all of my coaching clients where they initially come to me. Some people cut straight to the emotional stuff. They're like, Hey, I'm struggling with, you know, my mindset and like the emotions on this. And and that's cool. But a lot of people will start out being like, Hey, I'd like to be more organized or I need to be held accountable to accomplish these goals. I'm bad at time management and organization. And I really want to build a business and make money out of doing the thing that I love. And I just need some support in making that happen around like three months in, that's when it's revealed that every obstacle they're facing is actually an emotional one. Mm. And that's when the real work begins. It's like, we've been playing with these like spreadsheets and lists and plans. And, um, and then you realize it wasn't like the lack of the plan and like me being bad at planning that was getting in my way. It was some emotion around why didn't I think of that myself? You know, why was I getting in my own way? Like anyone can really figure it out themselves Mm -hmm. if you have the proper mindset for it to always be looking for the solution. And I think that that's me being from like the DIY scene and Mm -hmm. being independent for so long. It's just building up this skill of like, I need to make this happen. How can I make it happen? And if you have emotional blocks getting in the way, so some of the most common ones being around shame and guilt. So Mm -hmm. this pressure of like, I should be able to figure it out. Why aren't I successful yet? Why am I doing X, Y, and Z when I know that that's bad for me? And I, I should, lots of shoulds be doing this. And gets into a cycle of I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I don't deserve this, and that can lead to various forms of self-sabotage. So sure. that's a very common problem that I see. There's also a lot of trauma within that as well as like 
I have been told and conditioned by the people in my life that this is not a viable pathway and it's never going to work. So I don't have the capability to imagine possibilities and opportunities for myself. So a lot of the breakthroughs that I have with people in that is identifying limiting beliefs, Mm -hmm. identifying the source of those limiting beliefs and the patterns of like, how are they showing up? What's triggering them? Like, let's get to know it, building awareness. And then the second part, which is forgiveness forgiving yourself for that, forgiving all the voices in your head that are mean to you or um, really high standards. And that's a really juicy area to get into and a common breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, in some, some of the things you named in the beginning, right? Like again, uh, my, my, you know, relatively short runway in doing this, although I've been doing this in some capacity for a lot longer, but officially as a business, you know, for this amount of time, but like the accountability, the time management, the limiting beliefs, like all the things you named at the beginning, I'm hearing those things too. And, you know, helping, helping give confidence, help people break through those barriers is, is really important. The shame thing is really interesting too. And, And maybe even some of the people I've worked with, they don't necessarily have shame about their path, but it's shame about getting help. Yes. Right? Like they don't, they don't, mm. they want it to remain. Some, some of my clients wanted to remain anonymous because they didn't want their peer. They didn't feel like they were on the same level as their peers and they didn't want it getting out that they were having help or, you know, even though I'm not, I'm just providing, you know, you know, support in a variety of different ways. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, that was a really interesting one for me. Do you, it's, what stage I'm I'm assuming you work with a variety of different creatives, but like what stage are these people typically at? Are they just getting started? Are they sort of, they've been doing it for a bit, they're plateauing. Are there some more advanced professionals out there? Like what's the kind Mm -hmm. of cross section of people you're working with? The majority of the people that I work with are either just starting out. They've identified like, I want to be an artist or I want, I could, I could maybe build a business out of this. And, but they're at the very beginning. So there's this huge road ahead and it's like navigating the stress and overwhelm of, I am at square one. How the heck am I going to get all the way there? So that's a common group of people. And the other group of people is the ones that have been creating for a while, but are ready to transition into making a business out of that. Mm -hmm. They are very proficient in their craft and good at creativity, but they haven't put on the entrepreneur hat and started treating themselves as a business. So those are the two most common groups of people. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's a common thing with me as well. It's, it's, I think I work with a lot of like hobbyists, right? Like they, Mm -hmm. For me, just closest to the pin, because I've spent so much time in like the dance and electronic space, like DJ producer world, right? Um, There are these, you know, nine to five hustlers who make music and DJ on the side, but they want to go full time in music, right? And so like, how do they transition? So like, you know, everybody's different. And I'm sure every uh, session and every program is a bit custom to the people you work with. But like, what are some of the tips, you know, you're you're helping people out advice you're giving as far as like transitioning from either making no money, making some money to being able to sustain life and live the life you want by doing what you love and making money from that. Like, what do you you got for the people out there? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I guess I think what you're asking is like tips specifically on that transition from hobbyist creator to entrepreneur creator. And a big tip that I provide is just the framework around marketing. So that's a place to kind of start with uh, thinking of yourself as a business is identify who your audience is. So it's wild to me how many artists and creatives don't know who they're trying to reach. And they're like, I don't know anybody who likes it. And when you can get specific on like, this is the demographic, that's huge because then you can start creating 
content and, and packaging your offering in a way that appeals specifically to them. So that's the next phase. It's like, okay, I know my audience. Now, what are their challenges? What are their needs? What are their pain points? And what do I have to offer? What do I love doing? How can I package something that's going to serve them specifically? So it's like honing the offering is kind right. of the next level. Is it, are you a music producer and you want to work with this genre of independent artists? Like, cool, let's focus on like that part of your business. Or are you an independent artist that specializes in like, like you're a, you really like touring and like playing live and playing these kinds of shows and then you to these kinds of people. Let's, let's go in on that. So identifying your target audience, identifying your specific offering. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more within that one because that's where you can get really creative about what you do have for sale because a lot of musicians don't know what they're selling. Sure. So what they're trying to do is promote their Spotify page or promote their social media. And then they're like, but, but how does that make money? And it's like, well, that's not your offering. Like your offering isn't just your song on social media. I mean, maybe it is, but that's a path that's more for catalog artists who are getting millions of streams on every song. Right. Um, so what is it that you actually want to sell? Does your audience want to buy merch? Does your audience want to pay tickets to see you live? Is there some other creative thing that you can provide with your music? I had an artist that I was working with that came up for part of their merch line, um, candles that were uh, specific to their songs that they were promoting. So they had th three singles and these three different flavors of candles. And it was such a great idea. Yeah. So honing what your offering is because those singles, <laughs> streaming those singles was not going to make them money. <laughs> and you're not going to sell a physical copy of the single probably. So right. like, what can you do? Um, that is, which is unfortunate. That's a whole other level of a conversation of, you know, people are like, why isn't, music like the thing that we we really undervalue music now because streaming but that's a whole other conversation yeah. so yep. mm -hmm. um but but those are are some huge components of how to start thinking of yourself as a business know who you're selling to and know what you're selling and how that actually makes you money yeah i, I yes <laughs> like we don't we don't think about that and especially creatives too and like when just just to clarify, when you say creatives, yeah, that can mean a lot of different things. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean just music. Um, so, are you working with a cross section of creatives, or is it specific to music, and you're just using that word? Yeah, no. Thank you for clarifying. I, so, I'm I'm trying to speak mindfully of uh, I work with creatives across the board. So, okay. people beyond just the music world, um, yeah. crafters, vendors like physical artists, writers, mm -hmm. um, designers. Um, but, and then when I'm speaking about musicians, I'm, I'm trying to say like independent artists or okay, like musicians, you. but <laughs> everybody across the board. What's interesting about that is like, I have a little bit more to offer for the musicians and the independent artists because I have this music industry knowledge and background and degree. Sure. So my coaching with them looks a little bit different than the general creatives, which is more, I'm not an expert in your field, but I can help you identify what you need to do and how to make it happen. Sure. Whereas when I'm talking to independent artists, I'm like, this is how a distributor works. And like, <laughs> this is what a publishing company is. And yeah. I can speak a little bit more into those okay. things. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Because that's that's always interesting too, right? It's like you, you know, you've been able to expand from just like what you know the best and being being an artist. I mean, I want to ask you two two kind of different questions right now. Like one of them is, what can you take from your twelve year career? What have you taken, or what do you take from your twelve year, you know, career as an artist and and implement in your coaching, both for artists and non artists, right? Like so, maybe what are some of the biggest lessons you've learned? I guess is a good way to phrase that. 
And then outside of that, I also wanted to take it back and like, I'd love to hear a story about like a client that you worked with who like had absolutely no business savvy whatsoever and now is a successful entrepreneur. Like two very different questions. If you want to answer both, great. Yeah. Choose whichever one you want to start with. But. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll do the first one that you asked first. But what <laughs> it's my coaching is incredibly informed by my path as an artist and every single failure that I encountered and mistake that I made. Every single one is now wisdom that I can yeah. use to share with another artist. But something specific within that is this realization that like you can do it any way that you want. You don't have to be a successful independent artist some specific way because there's so many people out there that will tell you like, this is how you do it. 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 I tried a lot of those things and that did not feel good for me. And I realized I don't have to do it that way. You know, like there are these rules that are fed to us about how the music industry works. And while there is so much truth to them as a creative person and an entrepreneur, when you start thinking about yourself that way, rather than just a musician, just an independent artist limited to the, the workings of the music industry, so many more possibilities open up for you. Yeah. So that's something that I've learned my in my artistry, how I take that to my coaching business. Um, some wins or a story about uh, creative into an entrepreneur, I guess two people kind of come to mind that have me like really jazzed. And one of them is a music producer client that I've been working with closely for a very long time, who's very passionate about when we started working together. He booked me for, I think it was like three out a three hour call every week. He was like, <laughs> I, I am ready to get my shit together. I love like, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get on all the nitty gritty of everything. And we had so much fun digging into every single area of his life, outlining what goals do you have in this area? What are the action steps that you need to take? Now mm -hmm. let's implement those action steps onto a timeline and into a weekly routine, into a daily routine. And we have rehauled his entire life to be, it was kind of all over the place. Like I want to be a music producer and I'm doing it a little bit, but I'm also scattered and I'm working these other side hustles and these other jobs. And now he's all in with music production. He is mentally and physically so much clearer and more confident in himself and is making his living completely off of doing music production gigs. Hell yeah. Because he went all in and was like, yep. what do I have to do? I'm going to do it. Let's commit. That makes all the difference than somebody who says, okay, here's like a little piece of advice. Like I'll follow that and run with that for like a month. It's like, he was like deep talks once a week, every week and actually doing the work in his real life and, and putting it into practice. So that's that's a really fun story working with him and then another one just happened recently can i because, actually just yeah, talk pause. yeah so, yeah so uh I, well i'm curious about that person so what how is that person making money are they are they getting hired as like an in-studio you know producer like what what because again with my world producers like a laptop jockey <laughs> right. yeah no, he yeah he has there, but... he has a his own studio that he works out of Mm -hmm. Um, some of the artists come to the studio, some of the stuff he does remotely and he does production and mixing and mastering for indie and pop okay. artists. So he's like a, uh, you know, a Rick Rubin versus like a beat maker, you know, like that, that kind of thing. So he's actually, he's, he does, he does, he does a lot more cause he's making the music too. So oh, okay. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So not for everybody. Like some people come and they're like, I already have all this stuff, but. He does work with a lot of artists that literally will bring him a voice memo of acapella vocals. And he has to build a whole track around that. 
That's incredible. And now he's yeah. making a living doing this full time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you said an interesting thing and then I'll let you share the next story, but um, the, the like both feed in thing, right? Like the all in thing. Like I see this and hear this so much. And um, you know, when I was in artist management, cause that's, that's like a step that led me to this was, you know, um, the desire to be full-time in music, but the, that this is a mindset thing, right? Is this, this scared, being scared to go all in on something, right? Being afraid. What if it doesn't work? Like, yeah, you know, it, it like, that is the biggest thing for a lot of these people mm -hmm. who may never be full-time music people because yeah. they, they just can't, you know, unlock the, like, I can do this mentality, like this will happen for me, whatever, in whatever form. And mm -hmm. you know, I've seen opportunities where maybe somebody loses their job and I see that as an opportunity and they're like, oh, I got to find another job, you know, because I need to make money. And I'm like, yeah. what about making money doing what you're good at? You're an amazing yeah. producer. Maybe give some less, you know, like there's so many yeah. different avenues. They say a million ways to make a million dollars. So like, yeah. I'd love to hear your perspective on the like overcoming the self doubt, sure. and the like getting both feet in the water and just pushing forward. Yeah. Well, I think the first thing to acknowledge is because there's so many different types of creators, artists out there that the path of being a full-time artist is not for every artist. Right. And it's really important to acknowledge that because I think some people are, are happy just like creating X amount, not like full-time every single day. And because it's going to take so much work and commitment to make it your full-time job. And while that's scary and fear can be a blocker for some people, like that's just not even what they want. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's good to understand where you land within that. Like do like really asking yourself, like, do I want my full-time career to be creative? Because it's going to come with you know, all of this stuff, like, do yeah. I want to do that? Um, do so everyone, yeah. of, sorry to interrupt. Do you think it's, it's okay. a difference of like people saying they want it, but not having that internal dialogue with themselves? Cause I mean, again, in my small corner of the world, like a lot of the people I work with, I think every person I work with wants, they're like, I want to be full-time. I'm like, I do a visualization exercise with them. Yeah. I'm like, close your eyes. Where are you? What are you doing? What, well, you know, that right. kind of thing. But do you think there's this also this this group of people maybe that say they want it, but then either they don't know what comes with that or what kind of work goes into it, or or they just you know they want to be on you know uh, they want the like the the glamour of it and maybe yeah. you know I, well you know I mean? yeah two things first of all to what you're saying yes a hundred percent like <laughs> so many people are, like they have this vision of like what being a full time creative is. And it's only the good stuff. It's like yeah. only the huge wins. It's not the work. And right. so when they say they want it, they want the results. They don't want the lifestyle. And that's a really important thing to go into. Um, what was the other thing that I was going to say? Um, oh, the other thing is that I, I think some people think that they want that because they're just not creating enough. And you can shift your balance a little bit. Like I know so many people who like their full-time job is like soul sucking. Like they hate it. And so they're like, I wish I was an artist full-time. And I'm like, maybe you do, or maybe you just wish you had a better job that like you didn't hate. And then I'll give you a little bit more time to create. Like that's a possibility too. You don't just have to work a soul sucking corporate nine to five or be a full-time artist. Like within that spectrum, there's so many things and it's worth examining. Like, where do you actually want to be? If you're not happy with the life that you're living every day because your job sucks and you have other responsibilities. Been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's probably exacerbating this desire to be a full-time artist because you want out of, you want the opposite of what you're in. Sure. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yes. Yeah. It's, it's that like grass is greener, that daydreaming sort of, um, mentality. And then, okay. So I'd love to hear the other story too, of your other, um, 
artist, creative to entrepreneur little win there. Yeah. Well, so that's a, this one's a win in early stages. And I want to just acknowledge what that looks like, because this is a, such a relatable path for so many people. It's, um, this artist slash creative person. So music plus some other stuff, Mm -hmm. um, that very similar to the story, the example I just gave in a job that they hate (laughs) and they were like, how am I ever going to make money on music or anything creative? And we got through so many layers within that and just identified like some business ideas. And they had, they were coming from a place of like, it's impossible. There is no way to make money off of this because the ways the ways that I know to make money off of music are so unattainable for me where I'm at. And we just had this brainstorm conversation where I was like, what is it that you really want to do? Here's how you can monetize that. Mm-hmm. And that was a huge win itself because they, this person, they were riding a high off of that like revelation. I mean, they still are <laughs> riding that high of like, I feel so much liberated now because I realized that there's so many possibilities for me and that yeah. actually it can be easy to create a business out of something that I love. I just needed the ideas and I needed sure. the imagination to start flowing. Wow. So that's an important win to acknowledge too, is like this person is in such early stages of their entrepreneurship. Um, like they're not uh, making money on what they want to do yet, but they're able to start planning their business. They see the path. They had the yeah. light bulb. They had the light bulb moment. They see the path. Now they know they can do it. And like, you know, I'm, I'm going to share, I'm like really excited to want to check in with a client today. And, mm-hmm. and like, I, like he's talking in ways that we want to hear people talk. It's like, he went from, uh, I want to do this to, I am doing this right to a complete confidence change to actual measurable statistics going up into the right, like all these things, you know, and it's just great to hear somebody be, he's like, I'm closer than I've ever been to realizing this goal and dream for myself. You know, wow. it's just like, it gives me chills to hear that, you know? So yeah. So I, I, make me feel good, but <laughs> t- tell me, you know, your perspective, cause we, you know, we have different coaching approaches. Like sure. What were, what was the breakthrough moment for that artist? Like, what was the conversation or the the thing they started doing that set them up to be in this point in their career? Yeah. And, and he's, he was already on a great track, really talented uh, producer, DJ. Um, he, he's a similar age. You know, I've noticed some, some similarities and differences with like, you know, age is just a number, but it's also, it, it creates experience and learnings and wisdoms in life. And these people, I think, are a little bit more self-aware um, that are maybe a little bit more advanced in their age, which is yeah. weird to say. But, um, you know, so I think, like, for him, it was my approach is, and those who know me will know this, is, like, I'm an East Coast guy. I'm direct. Like, I will give a little bit of tough love. I will challenge people. That's my style. Yeah. And, and, you know, even like, I literally had him shout out loud, like, you know, the DJ world, it's like, everyone's a DJ now. So it's like getting watered down by like, even how much you're getting paid for a gig. Mm -hmm. And I literally had him shout on a, on a session one time, I will not, I'm never taking a hundred dollars for a gig again. Like he shouted it three times at me and I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. You're not going to, you know? Yeah. Um, But I think it's just this combination of like, he said this today too, on the calls, like, he's always been siloed, right? Like there are these people who are working in silos. They've never really had his wife doesn't really, you know, get it. They share other things in life, but like this, this part of his life isn't really a language she speaks. And so just Mm -hmm. having like somebody he can text when something good happens to him and we can feed off of each other, brainstorm things together. Um, I, he's definitely putting himself out there more. He is also like, you know, we're, I, I've, I've started doing this thing with, with my clients around like creating a fuck yeah checklist, mm-hmm. which basically means like, you know, gig opportunities, everyone wants to gig, right? And, but like, sometimes we take gigs just to take gigs. I'm guilty right. of that as a performer. 
Um, but like putting together a checklist of like, these criteria have to be met in order for me to say, fuck yeah, I want to take yeah. that gig. And so to be able to be like more, That's just great. be more organized with that, have that mindset of like, I'm valuable. I've been doing this a lot longer. Like he got, he won this contest to play a gig in Florida. Um, he's DJing like after this person who's been playing for like a year or two, he's been doing it for like 15, you know? So like that actually gave him like a lot of confidence because he knows he's really good at what he does and he's comparing, mm -hmm. you know, he's not comparing himself to others, but he's just seeing what the market looks like. And he's just like, I'm so much more on the path to, you know, to realizing my full potential and making a living out of this. And it's, yeah. and it's true. And like, so we work on like, you know, if you take this gig, what are the, what are the positives? Like, what are you going to take away from it? Are you going to, you're going to take a free gig here. Okay. But are you going to gain something out of it long-term for your career? And so we're like, we're really like in the weeds with this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. We're talking about like, he's got a song coming out Friday. So we're talking about like, he's stressing because he wants to do a recap from this, you know, Florida trip, but he's got a song coming out. And I'm like, dude, it's fine. Like <laughs> combine the two, right? Like uh -huh. do your recap and use your song over that. That's coming out Friday. Boom. Um, and like, he's like, dude, I'm like, he does a nine to five, like marketing, advertising, a lot of, he creates a lot of content for these big brand clients. Yeah. He's like, dude, I'm like tired. Like, I don't, you know, I'm like, dude, honestly record yourself saying that be like, I'm tired. I do this every day. Here's my new song. Go listen to it. I'm like, dude, yeah. just like have fun with it. Like it's not yeah. something to stress about. Like, yeah. So I think just like having this sort of like relationship, this partnership, it's collaborative. It's it's um it's not completely one sided. He actually helped me with a content idea for my own personal thing last That's week, and awesome. it crushed. You know, so yeah, it's it's really fun, and um, you know, I just I, I just seeing the progress week to week with people and getting the text, you know, getting the, getting the message mm. between mm -hmm. calls like, yep. is the best part. So like, sure. like, you know, it's, it's, I, I'd started doing this because people would come to me for advice and I was like, I can, I can help more people on a larger scale. If I, if I put my two feet into this, right. And like you, I'm still trying to create, I had an epiphany when I was on an ayahuasca ceremony about like, I need to remember that I'm a creator too. Yes. And to still put my music out and still perform yeah. and create unique experiences for people to come dance and all that, that sort of thing. So yeah, 100%. I'm, living, I'm living it and I'm trying my hardest to practice what I preach because I think leading by example is so important in what we do. So yeah, that's, yeah. And I know, I know we're kind of out of time here, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> I like, I could have so many more rounds of this conversation let's do part like, two and three we gotta do part two we we're just scratched the surface 30 oh, minutes barely. has never gone quicker yeah yeah this is fun um yeah. thank you for for sharing your insights and your tip of the iceberg with me um yeah, yeah let's we'll we'll talk offline for sure about setting up more of these chats and and mm -hmm. like i said it's a rising tides thing the more people yes. we can help um the more success stories we can share i think everybody wins so yes and no one's in it alone nope definitely not definitely yeah. not so awesome. thank you so much thank I'm you gonna... stop <laughs> no thank you no this is great um have a good rest of your day and let's talk soon okay okay sounds All great right. thanks so much john enjoy germany thank you yay <laughs>